Hello, my name is Miss Christine. I'm with the Spencer Road Library, and welcome to Let's Explore. For today's Let's Explore, we're going to try a little bit more of a challenging project than we've done in the past. We're going to be doing batik. Batik is a process of dyeing fabric, and traditionally it's used with wax and fabric dye, uh, but I figured out a way that we can do it at home. So in just a second, I'll tell you all of the supplies that you'll need for batik. All right, guys, for today's recording, you're going to need quite a few supplies, and I tried to put that in our calendar so that you knew ahead of time, but this is a project that's going to, it's not difficult in the process, it's difficult in, uh, you have to be patient, and you have to wait for things to dry. So um, the first thing you're going to need is a pencil, a piece of white paper, a Sharpie, um, some tape, some waxed paper or saran wrap, but wax paper would be better. Maybe parchment paper. Um, some fabric, white fabric. It could be any size. Um, my size is just the size that fits for my camera. Um, some glue. And now the glue is the important part. It needs to be washable. And I found that Elmer's clear washable glue works the best. Um, so if you can get this, great. If not, um, just make sure that it's washable. Um, you also need some acrylic paint, um, and I made them pretty watery, so you'll see. Uh, we want it to be almost like watercolor, but we need it to be acrylic so it stays on the fabric. And then we need water and a paintbrush, and I think that's it. All right, so let's get started. Um, we are doing an autumn batik, so I thought it would be cool to do a drawing of leaves. So I've got a nice drawing that I did here um, with leaves overlapping, very simple shapes. You could do any kind of batik you want. Um, you could make it fall themed. Um, you could do leaves or you could just really just have fun with it. So I chose very simple shapes um, just because I didn't want it to get too complicated for you guys today. So I drew them in pencil first. I hope you can see. Um, if not, I'm going to outline in Sharpie. So we're going to do that now. So. We want to outline in Sharpie so that we can see it through all of these layers. We're going to have a layer of fabric, a layer of wax paper, um, a layer of glue. <laughs> see, I told you it was a little more challenging project today. Um, so Sharpie, nice thick Sharpie is going to be great to help us see through all those layers. So I'll try to do this quickly. I'm really glad that I tried this project. Like I said, traditionally it's done with wax and fabric and fabric dye. Um, and I really wanted to figure out how we could do it at home. So I'm pretty happy with the results. I hope that you guys like it too. So we're almost done with our overlapping leaves. It's okay if they don't match perfectly. Really it's what, it's what the glue does that matters and the paint. All right, so finished outlining our leaves. Oh, that one's really off. That's okay. I'll redo it with the glue. Okay, so we're good to go. Closing up my Sharpie. Now, next part's gonna seem a little strange, but what we need to do is layer it. So we're going to place wax paper over the drawing, and then we're going to place fabric over the wax paper. You want to place the wax paper in between the fabric and the paper because when we paint this, the paint is going to want to stick to the paper and it will you'll have trouble getting it off. So we're going to use our tape and we're just going to tape everything down. You can tape it right to your table. Um, I've got a piece of white paper here that I'm just going to tape it to. And I really don't anticipate it moving around a whole bunch, well, except for right now. You do want to make sure that your fabric fits your drawing though, so that's something important. I'm taping everything down. You guys can see the bottom. It's tricky. It's tricky to show this project, but we're going to do it and it's going to be awesome. All right. I'm not going to worry about taping the top because I really don't think this is going anywhere. Okay. So now comes the fun part. We're going to use the glue. So it's, I chose clear glue, which I, I just, I did this project lots of times. I experimented lots of times to make sure it would work. And I just found that the clear glue 
um, work the best. I will warn you, it is going to spread and it's okay. It will still work out and it will still be beautiful. So I always usually, always usually, I always start from the corner and work my way up through the center and then to the other corner. So I'm really just looking for that black Sharpie line and outlining with my glue, all my lines. I did forget to mention, you probably don't wanna have a lot of tiny details for this boutique project because, um, well, the glue's gonna make, it's gonna spread and it's gonna make a big glob. <laughs> so, Try to make sure that your details are kind of spaced out, um, kind of large, and I think you'll have some success. I've got a little bit of a clog here, so I'm going to clear that with my fingers. There we go. What Mrs. Tavares? Miss Christine didn't tell you is that I mixed two glues together just to see what would happen and now the old glue is trying to come out. <laughs> this is what artists do. We do lots of experimentation. All right, I think I cleared it. It's working out well now. Okay. We're outlining, we're almost done. Remember that part I talked about being patient? Okay, here is the first part of being patient. This glue has to dry all the way. So, uh, because if you paint it, the paint will mix with the glue and it'll just be a big mess. So what you're gonna wanna do is set it to the side. Um, if it's a nice sunny day and you set it in the sun, it'll probably dry in a couple hours. If it's a day where you're inside and it's kind of yucky outside, you might just need to let it sit somewhere flat um, and it, it might take the whole day, but outside on a sunny day would be good. It might speed up the process for you. All right, last one. I decided to use both hands to squeeze. It's just coming out faster and I can control it a little bit better. So I apologize if my hands are in the way, but you get the idea. All right, guys, so we've glued everything. I'm gonna double check. I can already see where it's starting to spread, but I'm really not worried about it. I think it's still gonna turn out beautiful. And we gotta let that dry. All right, guys, so the fun part about recording is mine is already dry because I, I did two of them, so I'm ready to go. Um, so we're ready to paint now. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to look for those black lines. We're trying to paint our leaves. Um, it, it's really okay if you get paint on the glue. I try to avoid it, but if if you get the paint on the glue, it's fine. So because this is an autumn batik, I thought it would be fun to kind of, um, you know, paint some fallish colors on these leaves. Um, so I made my acrylic paint pretty watery because we don't want it to totally take over the glue. And so I just felt that this worked better. Um, even though I made it watery, I'm finding that I still need to add a little water. And I'm just gonna kind of paint over my glue, but you can see the glue will start to show up. It'll start to resist a little bit, and that's what we want it to do. I'm gonna start um, blending some orange. So I'm making orange. I don't know if you guys can see my palette in the camera, but I'm gonna pull some red and some yellow, right? And yellow make orange. We're gonna add some orange to this leaf. And I'm gonna add a little water on top of that to make them blend a little bit better. And then I think I'm even gonna add some yellow at the top of this leaf. Sometimes you're gonna have to press your fabric down to find that, find those black lines. Okay, I think this leaf is painted. Uh, maybe this guy down here, sometimes the leaves stay green for a while. So I'm gonna add some green. But I had a little yellow on my brush still, and I like that. So we're gonna add a little yellow. Like he's starting to change, but he hasn't changed yet. Um, this leaf over here, sometimes the leaves are brown, but I don't want it to be just all brown. So I'll probably blend in some red.
Yet again, another messy project for Miss Christine. But you've come to expect that, so you know. Ooh, I like it. I think I'm gonna add some orange at the top. Beautiful. And I just add a little water to kind of, if I want to blend the colors together, I'm just spreading them out. Okay, where's my other leaf? Oh, here's one. Uh, let's make this guy yellow. I don't want him to blend in with the red so much. Uh, yellow and orange, I think, yeah. This on my orange. I think I went outside the lines, but that's okay. I did. I see it. <laughs> I have one more up here. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. We'll do this guy multicolor. We'll do some red. Because sometimes you see those leaves, right? Where they're all like the red and green and orange and yellow. I think we're going to try that. And some orange. Orange is a little, a little creamy. I don't know if I want it to be that creamy. I'm liking it though. Uh, some more yellow. Some green. Whoops. Ooh, very nice. Okay, so make sure that all of your leaves are painted. Um, I included some blue and purple on my palette uh, because we're gonna pretend that we're looking at looking at these leaves. Um, and the sky is in the background. So look at that. Isn't that awesome? And your paint will blend a little bit. It'll bleed a little bit, um, but that's okay. It just adds to the beauty of batik. Batik is something, it's not perfect. It's not something, if you want something perfect, you know, you're talking like a drawing or um, if you're a really awesome painter, you're talking about, um, you know, painting with precision. This is definitely not something with precision, but it is fun and it can be beautiful. I'm gonna add a little purple. I'm gonna make the sky a little deeper over here. And I think my purple is a little too thick, so I'm gonna come back and just water it down a little bit. How about some purple for this area? And a little blue. Oh, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. How about purple and blue mixed together up here? I found on one of my experiments too that it was really fun. Do you see this little drop right here? I don't know if you guys can see that. That was an accident, but I like to call it a happy accident. So what I'm gonna do is sometimes the leaves are speckled a little bit. I'm just gonna drop some green on this guy. I'm gonna drop some red on this guy. And that'll just kind of um, blend in and kind of look very soft, but I think it's going to be a fun little accent. I'm going to add some brown to this guy. All right, so check for white spots. I see one down in the corner. And then here comes that patience part again. This has to dry all the way. So again, if it's a sunny day, you can set it outside. It'll be dry in no time. Um, if it's not sunny, it, it's probably going to take a lot of the day. But make sure it's all the way dry for the, before you do the next step, okay? So for the final part, like I said, this has to be all the way dry. We're gonna pretend that mine is dry. Um, and I wanted to show you that when it is all the way dry, you're gonna kind of disassemble it. So you're gonna take, you really just wanna get the fabric all by itself. So you're gonna take off the paper, you're gonna take off the wax paper until you just have the fabric, okay? I'm gonna take the tape off the fabric. So you get the idea. I'm gonna do the Presto Changeo and show you that mine is all the way done because there's no way that you guys could have waited for hours and hours and hours on this recording to see the final product. But once you get that fabric separated, you're gonna wash it in warm water, maybe a little soap. It might have to soak for a little bit, but look at this. Isn't this awesome? This is our batik fabric. And here's the, the spreading of the glue that I talked about. It spread out a little bit, but look at how it resisted that paint. Isn't that cool? So if you were doing traditional batik, the wax would resist the dye and it would be the same way. It would leave a white design left over. Um, so I hope you guys liked it. I know it was a long project. It will be a long project, um, but I just thought it would be something cool that we could try. And uh, again, if you make it and you come up to, to visit us, I would love to see what you did. 
Thanks guys, I'll see you next time on Let's Explore.